Um, I think one of the blessings of uh, family is being encouraged when, uh, when aren't you encouraged with the testimony of the Ate Aya? Like hearing what God is doing in every one of us in each of our lives. It's a blessing to belong in such a family that, uh, you know, we experience the goodness of God every day. Um, can you tell that to your uh, seatmate? Uh, I am glad that you are part of God's family with me. Amen, amen. Pinapaiyak ko ni Ate Aya bago mag-umpisa eh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So girls, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning. We thank you because uh, we are privileged to be in your house today. Thank you for your goodness to us the whole week. Thank you because we are here breathing, Lord, and experiencing, Lord, your goodness, Lord, and even hearing the blessings that you have been pouring out to our family members, God. Lord, um, even as we go into your word this blessed morning, God, we ask, Lord, that uh, the heavens will continue to be open before us, Lord, that the, our family uh, in heaven, even, Lord, will, uh, Lord, be one with us here on earth, Lord, as we glorify you in the preaching of your word. We thank you, God, that our ears of understanding, Lord, and our eyes of understanding be enlightened, Lord, this morning, so that we will receive what is from you this morning. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To most of us uh, who, are, who were here last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday was record. We finished at what? 2 p.m.? Yeah? Uh, and aren't you glad? Ako personally, I am glad that uh, our Tito Dan and Tita Tanet was able to visit us again uh, for a long time. And being part of the family, we see them every year, but Two years or almost three years, we didn't see them, and it was a blessing uh, for us to hear them and hear the message of the Lord to them uh, last week. Right now, they're in Windsor, uh, celebrating the anniversary of the church not in there. Um, and I think the next time we'll see them will be in December. So last Sunday, you know, the young people and everyone here at church spent you know the whole afternoon just to be be with them and uh have have bit to be prayed even by by tita dan um so um okay let can we all stand up as we read uh from the word this morning uh, let's all open our bibles to first peter chapter two and i know this is going to be familiar for most of us because uh this is one of the messages or the verses that we uh, studied at camp. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, if you're there, uh, let's read it all together. One, two, three. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood who offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Okay, all together, one, two, three. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, which Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And lastly, uh, let's also turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 31. Just as, as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. 
For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each of you is a part of it. God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all the work miracle. Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and I will show you the most excellent way. Let's all uh, sit down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. So, are you familiar with the verses that we read today? Yes, you've heard about it. You probably have been familiar we uh, heard it, heard a bit of it from Queer Robin at camp. Um, but uh, for this Sunday and the next uh, Sunday, um, we are going to go to we're going to have a two part series that uh, I've entitled "Realigning God's Family to Partner Together in These Last Days." And today we will be starting with a foundational message of being members of god's family can we all say that members of god's family and as we read from uh first peter chapter 2 we learned that we are what we are clsf we are living stones and as living stones or in other translations they use the word lively stones. Sino sa inyo lively this morning? Can can I hear a shout? Or inantok, inantok tayo. Um, or living stones being built up as a what? A spiritual house. A spiritual house of God. If you remember, for some of us who were at camp, and if not, um, in the Old Testament, we... Uh, we have heard of the theme, or maybe you've gone through this in our Bible study, the, the topic in the tabernacle and the temple. In the Old Testament, um, God was uh, using the tabernacle and the temple as a means or a place where God's presence dwells, where God's glory dwells in the midst of his people. 
Like in, if you remember in the in in Exodus, um, in the wilderness, remember there is what what is in the center, the tabernacle of Moses, and during that time there's rituals and sacrifices going on in the tabernacle day and night, and for the purpose of of uh, the priest ministering to God day and night, so that the presence and the glory of God would dwell in the midst of the camp. Also, in the time of David, you've heard about the Tabernacle of David. Are you familiar with the Tabernacle of David? It's a bit different from the Tabernacle of Moses, where in, instead of sacrifices, animal sacrifices being given, David had the revelation from God to offer what? Praise, worship, joy, and thanksgiving. It was a bit of a prophetical uh, looking forward to what will happen when Jesus comes. That we would have access to the presence of God without the sacrificial uh, giving of animals. Because Jesus, once and for all, paid and died for that. And we are no longer required to give uh, animal sacrifice. Imagine, you know, in the Old Testament, you would come, each one of us would offer sacrifices in the altar every time or as, as, as often as maybe we sin or we have offerings before the Lord. This, this place would be bloody. I, I remember, um, I remember, you know, I think, I'm not sure if it's in somewhere in Nepal, uh, that just the picture of blood being offered hundreds of bulls and rams, it, it looked very, it wouldn't be a pleasant sight in our days today. But God used it as a, um, a picture of when Jesus would come. And in the New Testament, what happened was, when Jesus came, he paid for all our sins once and for all. And now we, we have become, our bodies and even us corporately have become the dwelling place of God. Our, isn't that privilege? Um, are you, are, are you glad that the Spirit of God dwells in each one of us? The Spirit of God dwells within us. It says in John 14, 21, just before Jesus' crucifixion, He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. In verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Or in other words, we will dwell with him. So, this, even us, as a body of believers, even while we were worshiping earlier, and every time that we come before the Lord in worship, we become the place or the, the in, in, in uh, David's words in the book of Psalms, the Lord dwells, inhabits the praises of his people. So how privileged are we now to be able to have access to the, the presence of God every day. And that's something that we can be really thankful for. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, the Apostle Paul also confirms the same truth. It says there, you. Consequently, you, he was talking to the Ephesian believers. Um, most of them are Gentiles. says, you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with God's people. He was telling the Ephesian believers that they are no longer foreigners, but are now citizens of the kingdom of God. Who among us here are uh, citizens of Canada? Let me see. 
I think, uh, less than half. Uh, there are still, mo most of us here are probably uh, PR or probably on student visa or visiting visa. But what this signifies is that um, just like when most of us came to Canada, we started as foreigners and strangers. And maybe some of us still are. Arguably, when we are not citizens, we are considered second-class citizens compared to actual citizens. What does that mean? That when we got our Canadian citizenship, we became first-class citizens of Canada. Do you know the benefits of a citizen? Of a Canadian citizen? Okay, healthcare. You can vote. And you can also run for office. Who wants to run for office here? Last year, Robin, I would tease him that, you know, our future prime minister. But one, one benefit of being a, a Canadian citizen also is that you're eligible for any jobs here in Canada. Unlike if you're, you know, uh, working. I know Cyric just got his... Uh, j last Thanksgiving, he got his work permit educational work permit so now he can work here in canada but citizens of canada can work whatever job they want that's one benefit of being a canadian citizen what else exactly why because we have one of the most powerful passports in the world i think if you have a canadian pa if you want to travel go apply for Canadian citizenship because you don't need to apply for visas going to different places. Well, you need money. <laughs> but as a citizen, you're entitled to that Canadian passport and that Canadian passport is a powerful um, uh, document that you can use all over the world. What else? If you're a Canadian citizen, you cannot be deported. Because your home country is now Canada. But if you are not a Canadian citizen and you did something, you know, that they consider, I don't, I don't know what kind of crime, you can get deported easily. Um, so that's another um, uh, benefit of being a Canadian citizen. Lastly, your citizenship never expires. Unlike the PRs and the work permits and the student permits, what do you need to do every time? You have to renew and renew. In the same way, we were once part of the kingdom of darkness. But now we are called out by God and is now part of the kingdom of God. Do you know the benefits of being in the kingdom of God? The best benefit for me is that we have access to the king. We can have relationship with the king who created us. What else? We can have blessings of the kingdom. We can have joy, peace, love. What else? Justice. You don't need to defend yourself. God will in its time. Contentment, favor, financial blessings, everything that is according to God's will. And then one of the best also is that in the millennium reign, you can rule with Christ as you are found faithful now. So that is one of the benefits, many of the benefits of being in the kingdom of God. And that is what the Apostle Paul is saying here. You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people. And not just citizens. What does the next line say? Also members of his household. It means that you are now part of God's family like what we sang earlier i love this family of god 
in, for, in John chapter 1, verse 12, um, the Apostle John says in the beginning of his uh, gospel, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. Also in Galatians 3.26, for you are all sons of God through what? Through faith in Jesus Christ. And lastly, Romans 8, 14 to 16, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are born again into the family of God. And being born again in, in the family of God, there's many benefits that we can have in the family of God. One of it is, you know, being encouraged by our brothers and sisters, you know, having support when we need support, you know, even financial support when we needed support there's many benefits of being in the family of god and one of it is having intimate relationship with god and with each other um take note of the word members it says they're members of god's household because we're gonna go back to that later let's continue on in verse uh, uh 19 built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In verse 21, Paul speaks of the body of believers being a building. We, we are a building here. This building has a common foundation, and that foundation is built on the apostles and prophets, like Paul and Silas being one of the apostles and prophets in those times. But in that foundation is found as you remember P. Robin's uh, explanation about the cornerstone, in that foundation is a cornerstone. Like in the corner of the foundation, there is what they call a capstone or a binding stone. And that capstone is who? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the cornerstone is the most important stone in the building. It binds and aligns all the other stones thereafter. Uh, you remember, it, it's being used by uh, the builders to make sure that everything is being fitted together so that there's no siwang or gaps in between. Everything is being aligned. It is also the stone to which the stability of the building depended. And that is whom? In Christ. Christ is the cornerstone of the building, of the body of Christ. The whole building is being joined together and rises to become a holy temple of God. It speaks of the church, us, Ecclesia, being carefully, meaning carefully fitted, designed, joined together by God. Sometimes we uh, complain. Like, you know, why is, you know, maybe if you get offended by someone in the family of God. But did you know that God um, designed, carefully planned, and planted every one of us so that all of us will become fitted together to become the body of Christ. I remember in, in Acts chapter, um, I think chapter 2 or chapter 4, remember what happened in the early church? What kind of family they had during the early times? Do you desire that kind of family? The, fa the kind of family it says there uh, that shared common things with each other. That when someone was in need, everyone would Anyone can just sell his house. Sell his house. Like Barnabas sold his house 
and gave it to those in need. That kind of family, I'm, I'm sure in our time today, it's, is it difficult? <laughs> How much retirement funds do you have stored in your bank accounts? Could it be that in the end times, we would, you know, have that liberality to give as a family of God? Maybe right now, you know, we're doing well. But just maybe when persecution time comes and everyone is in need, those who have much will give to those. That is one of the blessings of being in the family of God. And, and it and continues and ends in here. In him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. So instead of a building, we are now the dwelling place of God through His Spirit. Not the physical church. Not the four walls. This place is not the church. We are the church because the Spirit of God lives with us. That's why, you know, when we go to the park, the church goes to the park. When we go to the streets, like what we did in Jesus in the city, the church was there. We have become the dwelling place of God. I hope that we agree, we all agree on this. One of the best families that we can belong to is the family of God. It's not perfect. How many you here have been hurt in the family of God? Maybe all of us will raise our hands. Maybe, you know, uh, there's so many, as we will learn later, there's so many differences. But one thing we can learn in this passage is that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And all of us are part and members of the family of God. This, this past few, um, I think, weeks and months, there's this one word that uh, has been repeated over and over. I heard this again last Sunday when Tito Dan preached. I heard this uh, also when Tito Francis preached. And even at camp, this word is the word realign. That, that, that God, even uh, I think during the celebration of Yom Kippur or the... the uh, Yom Kippur, there was all of Canada's leaders went into an online Zoom. I joined and I was listening to one of the lead pastors of, of the, all the churches in Canada. And he also mentioned this, that God is doing a realignment. God is doing a realignment so that we will all become realigned to the cornerstone. Because right now, I believe individually, you know, there are many things in our lives that are misaligned, is it? Now, if we're honest, we would say, yes, there are many things in our lives that are misaligned. God is, even the prophetic voices all over the world. I've heard Brother Sa Prophet Sadhu said this in Lancaster too, that God is doing a realignment. Probably, you know, because we got misaligned during COVID and our hearts got exposed. God saw, you know, how... You know, um, like, you know, some of us, you know, struggled during the time of, uh, of crisis and all. But right now, I, I, God is doing a realignment individually and also corporately. Who among you here after camp, you know, felt the realignment within the body? Right? That, that, that God is positioning hearts that have been misaligned. And God is saying that I want this body to be aligned to God's heart and to each other. And that is a privilege. Sometimes it's painful. It's painful when things get changed in our lives and when realignment happens. But God is saying that it is necessary. 
is necessary for us to go through the realignment of God. Um, one of the metaphors that Paul used, um, and this is the, the, the verse that we're going to dwell in, is in uh, the, the verse that we read in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 12. It is, as Paul says, we are like body members being realigned to the head so that the whole body can function as designed by God. When, when we say members, do you understand what members fully mean? Members. When we say members, I think one word that comes up to mind is the word membership. Among us here have membership in Costco. Uh, you have membership in what? Amazon, PC, CAA, uh, membership in insurance, ev everywhere. Like for me, gym, gym membership, yes. And all these kinds of membership are all over the place. And, and what do we do to attain, to attain this membership? We what? We pay monthly or yearly or one-time subscription, right? And then once we're a member, we get all the benefits. For me right now, I, I, because of the challenge with the young men, uh, I applied for membership for swimming for three months. And it's easy. I just pay one time. And every time I go to the, the swimming pool, I just tap and I can go swim. I get the benefits of what I paid for. But you see, there, because of this notion or concept of membership, um, we, have, we have probably lost a, a, a better understanding when God says we are members of the body. Why, why do I say that? Because unlike the memberships that I just described, the membership of being in the body of Christ, we did not pay for it. Did you pay for the membership to become in the body? No. Who paid? Jesus did. And so there's no cost for us. It was costly, but for us it was free. The Son of God had to pay for our membership. What, what is, else is the difference? That our membership, this membership in the body does not expire. You know, even our family, physical family, has expiration. But our spiritual family does not. Because here, when we pass... We, we join the host of heaven, the big family of God. In heaven, there's, there's no Papa Hill. There's, you know, there's no distinction much of being who our family members are. Yes, it's important for us to value our physical family because we want them to go with us in heaven. And we need to share the gospel to them because we want our family, our physical family, to join us with God. But that family expires here on earth. In heaven, it's going to be one big family. We're going to become a whole big family of God. So tell this to your seatmate. You will have me as your family member till eternity. You'll have to bear with me forever. Well, I'm sure in heaven, everything will be, you know, good and all. But that's the second difference of the membership of being in the family of God. But lastly, I think one of the most important is this. That the membership in the body of Christ is not just about the benefits. But all of us being members of this body have a vital part with each other. Because in, in membership, you know, Costco, you pay, you get the benefits, you don't do anything, right? But in the body, as members, we are part of one another. What we do affects the body. Remember what the verse 
said earlier, if one suffers, the body suffers. When Mom Liz, you know, had to go through Ima's uh, passing away, we all suffered with her. When Ate Aya was sharing earlier about the victories that she had, what did we feel? We rejoiced with her because we are part of that family. We have a vital role in the family of God. We are not just names in a list of church members. No. Maybe you're new here in CLSF or old, but God does not see you just as a written list of name that, you know, Tita Emma is a CLSF member. No. God sees you as a vital part of this body and God wants to use you so that this body will give him glory. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 6, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Even us, we are part of the bigger family of God. Even we as Gentiles have been grafted into the family of God, starting with the family of Abraham. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, it says there, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is him who is the head that is Christ from him the whole body joined and held together be by every supporting ligament grows in itself up in love as each part does its work keyword each part does its work we have a vital role in the body of Christ we have Vital parts, meaning we are interconnected, we are interdependent, and that we are indispensable. What, the, what does those words mean? We have connection with one another. If I were going to ask you, do you know everyone in the room? Probably not yet. But we can, because we can be connected with everyone. We can also be interdependent, like, you know, in the body, in the ministry of God. There are pastors, there are servants, there, there's interdependence with what God has given us. And none of us is indispensable. If one of us here, you know, just like in the story of uh, the parable of the lost sheep, you know, we're, we're going out for that one because every one of us here in the body is important. Because God has a vital purpose for us. We are members of the body of Christ, as Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. That there are many of us, but we are one body. We're all different. Just like the disciples were different, you know. I can't imagine um, yung, re yung relationship ng mga disciples because some of them were completely opposite. You know, like si Matthew, the tax collector, and si Simon, the zealot. They were enemies before they met Jesus. So Matthew was thought to be a, what, a traitor. And Simon, the zealot, went after traitors even see si peter and see si john you know the brashness of peter and the belovedness of john there's different um different personalities in between all of us but we are all part of one body and god planned it that way and that's the beautiful thing um imagine this um imagine a volleyball team with all liberos you know, yung liberas, yung taga-catch. 
How would that team fare in a competition? Eh? How about a, vol a soccer team, all goalies? <laughs> right? Or a football team, all quarterbacks? Like, sometimes we look at our differences and we criticize all our differences, but actually our differences and diversities is what makes the body function. Because if we're all the same, if we all look like, you know, as handsome as, or as, you know, a uh, good a singer as, there's not going to be any harmony. But that is the beauty of being in the family of God. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. Tito Dan is not the body of Christ. Nor is Tita Lisa. She's not the body of Christ, nor am I, nor are you. But what forms the body of Christ? Many members. It's not just us here in this room. The Christians that are in China is part of the body of Christ. The Christians that are being persecuted in Afghanistan is also part of us. When they're hurting, are we hurting? Even us as a global CSF family, you know, our church in Vancouver, in Windsor, we're just part of the global family of God. JIL, VCF, CCF, we are part of the body of Christ. Many, but one. As Tito Dan shared last week, if you have, you've been here, we are not starting churches just to say that we have many churches because that's what empire building we're just building up the name clsf oh we have what 550 churches oh no this church has like a thousand churches but what why are we why does clsf church exist tito dan said so that the body of christ will not be deprived of the unique calling that God has gifted our church. And we can be a part of that to the bigger body of Christ. In the same way, CLSF Mississauga is one of many parts of the body here in GTA. Or your Bible study is one of the many parts of you know, CLSF Mississauga, or you are one of the many parts of your Bible study. That's how big the family of God is. You are not just a member of this church just so that you will be counted on the attendance list, but you are valuable and you have a vital role in this local church in the bigger body of Christ. It's no accident that all of us are part of this body. Do you think it is? It's no accident. God designed it that way. And going from uh, verse 15 to 18, I'm just going to read verse 18. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted. You know, just because we have different function than the other body parts, it does not mean that we are not, not part of the body. The feet has a different function to walk than the ear to listen and sometimes we feel you know being in the family that because we're different you don't belong or you're excluded do you sometimes feel that sometimes we're quickly we're quick to disqualify ourselves oh i'm not as good as ati cj in singing or as good in public speaking as Kuya Jules, or as good as at the angel as dancing. So maybe I have no role in this body of Christ. Or I'm just a nurse, or a photographer, 
or a content creator, a realtor, an engineer, a writer, a mechanic, a plumber, I don't think that has a role in the body of Christ. But can't God use the nurses to heal the sick and brokenhearted in the hospitals? Isn't that a part of the body of Christ? Can't photographers like Carlo or content creators like Charles share their creativity so that the world can see the, the glory of God? Sometimes we're quick to disqualify ourselves that because we don't have this skill, that we don't have anything to share in the body. But all of us have something to share in the body of Christ. Titamila cooks well. And we are partakers of that blessing in the body. What else? Oh, I'm a shy person. <laughs> or I stutter. Surely God doesn't use people like me. Well, if that's true, Moses would have been disqualified. God is a place for you despite your personality. Oh, I cannot speak in tongues or see visions or prophesy. I don't think I can have a part in the body of Christ. Have you ever felt that? I, 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 I see them all with the gifts of tongue, but me, I don't have that gift. You know, sometimes you feel like you, know, you don't belong. But do you have faith? That's a gift. That's a spiritual gift. And God can use faith, supernatural faith to believe. And that means you can be a part of this body, the body of Christ. Oh, I came from a broken family. Surely God cannot use me in the body. Well, can't God use your story to someone else who needs to hear how God has been victorious in your life? Maybe you're just hiding your story. Maybe someone needs to hear it and that their faith can be encouraged. You see, even, you know, backgrounds, families, oh, I've done this in the past, but God has changed you and you can use that to be edifier in the body of Christ. Like a testimony. Oh, it's a favorite. Oh, I am a baby Christian. And I don't know lots of verses like Kuya Charles or Tito Philip. Well, do you know one verse by heart? Do you know one verse? One verse by heart. If you would just share that one verse to everyone in the body, then maybe God will use that to edify someone in the body. You don't need all the Bible knowledge or, you know, all this, you just have to use what God has given you. Just because we have a different function than other body parts, it does not mean that we are not part of the body. Instead of looking at what others have and desiring it for yourself and telling you, I can't be part of the body because I don't have this, why don't you ask God, Lord, what do I have? Imagine if every one of us will use what God has given us in this church alone, in the church of 100. Imagine how much the body would be edified. Remember the two loaves and five, two loaves of fish and five fishes of bread? How many did that feed? 5,000. God can use whatever is in your hand. But before I further proceed, let me clarify one thing. Salvation is a free gift, okay? You, we, we only need faith in Jesus to be saved. 
But being used in the body of Christ does not save us. Okay? It's not like, oh, I'm gonna serve in and that's gonna be an assurance for my salvation. No. We can be saved, yet be content with not using our gifts. But who's, who is it hurting? Yourself and the body. Remember, you are benefiting from the functions of other body members and that others are benefiting from your gifts. God planted you here in this church because he knows that you will grow here and that your gifts can become a blessing to others, but that also you will be blessed by the blessings or gifts God has given others. I remember, I, I know um, the story, I don't know if you know Elizabeth Elliot and Jim Elliot. Jim Elliot is a promising missionary to the Aki Indians, and she has a wife named Elizabeth Elliot. While they were ministering to the Aki Indians, what happened was, you know, some, you know, there was a commotion and all. It's a long story, but what happened was Jim Elliot died. And we could think that, oh, what a waste. What a waste. But maybe the life of Jim Elliot was just a seed that God used so that Elizabeth Elliot can minister to the Aka Indians. And by history, the Aka Indians was reached with the gospel because of the faith of these couple. Do not look at the magnitude of your function. Only be obedient to the divine call. And that's what Paul said to, I think, when he was being tried. Paul just said, I was obedient to the divine call of God in my life. For Paul, it was big. We can see all that he did. But for us, it doesn't have to be. You just have to be faithful with what God has given you. Last three. Oh, I'm too young. I don't think there's a role for me in the body of Christ. Well, how old was Samuel when God used him in the temple? Three, five? Can the young ones that we have here every Sunday, we, we look at them as kids, you know, they just play around. They have a role and a vital part also in the body, in the ministry. As young as Eli, or sino ba yung susunod na mga anak? Wala pa. Um, but God can use you no matter how young you are. Oh, I'm too busy with my school or career at the moment. Unlike everyone at church. Do you feel that sometimes? You know, those who are studying and are, you know, have to work hard because, you know, your life depends on it. Maybe you're saying, I don't have anything to offer the body of Christ. Well, just your presence here at church, despite your busyness, your presence at prayer meetings, despite your assignments, that is edifying the body because you are choosing the kingdom of God. More than, you know, the, the thing, the other things. Or maybe, you know, you don't need to be at church. Maybe you can just pray at home. Once a day for one person. If that's all that it takes. 30 minutes of prayer. You can have an impact in the body of Christ. You might not be seen here on stage or on the back or whatever. But God sees it, and you are doing a vital role in this body by just praying. And lastly, oh, I'm too old. I'm about to retire and just enjoy my life. To our elders ladies here in, in this church, the bo this body needs you. You are still of great use in the body of Christ and your calling does not, does not end on old age if you will let 
God use you. Oh, I don't have strength. Oh, I'm quick to forget. Well, we can make, we can make many excuses. But we will miss our purpose if we make these excuses. All God wants is for you to volunteer. God has a place for you in his body. And let, let me end here. There should be no divisions in the body uh, in verse 19 to 25, but that its part should have equal concern for one another. Um, I think even this, sometimes we're quick to disqualify others. <laughs> Maybe, you know, you're quick to disqualify yourselves. Maybe you're also quick to disqualify others. Maybe you're only good in carpentry. But, oh, you're only good with carpentry, but, you, and, but don't have the mind of a visionary. You, you see this? This designs. You know who made those? Tatay Carlo, Tito Noli, and... Tito Mani. What happened? They partnered with Kuya Joel, who saw a design, and both partnered together in the body and produced this. Isn't it beautiful? But you could say, the visionary can say, oh, I want visionary. Sometimes we're like that. We're looking for like-minded people, and we're willing to work with them. But sometimes God wants us to partner with others in the body so that what we cannot do, others can. Oh, all I do, all I can do is drive. <laughs> well, someone needs to be picked up. I'm a preacher. What, what's my benefit for someone who's driving? Well, that person can drive you anywhere you want to go to preach the gospel. Oh, that, that uh, young person only knows how to make jokes. I'm a serious person. I don't think we're going to fit together. Well, when you need some laughter in the seriousness of your life, who do you come to? Robin. <laughs> Like there's, there's this beauty and harmony in the body of Christ. We just need to realize that our diversity in the body is a strength and not a weakness. If Klein would say, like, you know, in the verse that we read, uh, you know, um, the foot, because he's not a foot, he's not part of the body. If Klein would say, oh, because you're not a drummer, you can't be in the band. Imagine the band with everyone as drummers. Would you listen? No. We just need to realize that our diversity in the body is a strength and not a weakness. And the strength of others, no matter how dishonorable it is, can be complement to our weakness. We just we should not be quick to separate others in the body, but instead have equal concern for each other, especially those who are more mature in the Lord. Because if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now desire the greater gifts. As we continue to use what God has given us, you will find yourself in a position to receive more from God. All you need to do is just give what God has given you. You will find yourself realizing that God is multiplying the gifts that you have because you are faithful with what you have been given. And even if you don't have, desire it. Because you can learn things, right? You know, you want to be as good as, uh, again, Kuya Jules in MCing. Well, what do you need to do? Kuya Jules, can we talk? Can you teach me? You want to be good in, uh, in, in, in teaching the Bible? Well, Tito Philip, can I go to your house? That's what being members of the body looks like. I'll end with this 
two verses because next week we're going to learn about being partners together in the body. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 9. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, the many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in according with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If, it's, if it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, who among you here can encourage? All of us can encourage. That is a gift that is given to all, I hope, I think. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And lastly, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So in closing, if you have been born again, we are members of the family of God. We are members of this local church for a purpose. God planted us here because he knows that this body has a need for you. But just remember one thing. You do not get all the glory. Who gets the glory? Our Father, our Lord. It is God who made us and gave to us. It is Him who placed us where we are. It is Him who gives us the grace and sustenance. It is God who is glorified. Next week, we're going to learn how we as members can partner with each other. Different types of partnership so that this body of believers will fulfill its divine calling in the bigger body of Christ. And that all of us, we can partner in many things, actually. And that all of us will be part of that partnership. But let me end with this challenge. Perhaps some of us here today is listening online or have been seeking for a family to belong. Maybe you feel abandoned or orphaned, rejected. Can I tell you that the inv this invitation to the best family in the world is free? Jesus already paid the price so that you can be part of this family. All you have to do is to repent of your sins, believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins and resurrected again and receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, you have made the best decision of your life because you have become part of the family of God. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son and that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Will you make that decision now? Do you want to become a, a member of the family of God? And maybe this applies to the most of us. Maybe you are discouraged and hurt. 
you know, by other parts of this body. It's not perfect. This body is not perfect. Maybe you stopped, you know, giving service because, you know, somewhere along the road you felt that, bakit pa? Well, 1 John 3.16 says, can you read that? This is how we know that what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. All you have to do is love the body. Maybe you're scared to give, to offer your gifts to the body. Well, everyone started scared. Even right now, when I was coming on stage, I was scared. But I knew that God would edify, God would use the gift that he has given me to edify the body. And to the faithful, those who have been faithful in giving their all to the body, despite how difficult it is. You know, you've been giving to the church financially, tithing, despite, you know, the struggles in your finances, in the family. God sees and honors that. You've been giving your time to the ministry on Saturdays and Sundays. God honors that. God sees the faithfulness that we are giving to him. And all in all, God is glorified. God is pleased with what you're doing. Keep it up. Let's all stand up as we close in prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, for I am part of this body of Christ. Lord, it is no accident that I am a living stone. I am part of Christ, the living stone fellowship, not just because I attended here or someone, Lord, just um, invited me or even pushed me to attend. Lord, it is your will for me to become a part of this family. God, Thank you for this family. Thank you, Lord, because you are good and you have give it, gifted me, not of a perfect family, it is imperfect, but that, that this is uh, the, the kind of goodness and love that you have given me. Lord, even right now, we uh, uh, pray this prayer, Lord of commitment, Lord, that we are committed to you first, to you only, Lord. But because of that, Lord, because of our commitment to you, we are committing ourselves, Lord, to offer ourselves, Lord, sacrifices so that you would use us for this body, Lord, this local church. Lord, no matter how small it is, all we want is we want to give what we have. And lastly, Lord, help us to fight for this family because this family sometimes is being uh, attacked by the devil lord i will fight for the unity of this family because this family is a gift from you and i will we will not allow anything lord to uh, divide or separate or cause confusion or chaos in this family but god we will pray hard love hard Fight hard, Lord, for this beautiful family that you have gifted us. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.